went to set them straight. And so beginning at verse 23, I'll read 23 down through 31. Let's read that together tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus came on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This too, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me of me. For as often as you drink, eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes, which is what we're called to do. Verse 27, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink the cup for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, yeah. and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. A, a, powerful, a powerful message from Paul regarding the night that Jesus would give his life, or at least start that process of... His arrest, his betrayal, his arrest, his crucifixion, death, and resurrection. <laughs> Jesus tells us twice in that evening, he tells his disciples twice to do this in remembrance of me. He tells them to remember something. And that night, if you, if you study that night, and all that took place that night, that there is a lot of stuff to remember. There's a lot of worthy things to remember. In John chapter 13, Jesus started that evening by washing his disciples' feet. The Lord of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth, stooped down and washed the feet of the men who followed him for three and a half years. That night, Jesus would also offer the new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. We look back at that night and we remember that Jesus would point out Judas as being the one who would betray him and Peter would be the one who would deny him. We remember that night. <clears throat> That's the night that Jesus would say, I am the way the truth and the life. We remember that night as well that this is the night that Jesus would say, I'm going away but I'm sending a helper, the Holy Spirit, to you. That night he talked about a lot of different things. He talked about being the true vine. Uh, the disciples even that night had something, they did something that we remember. They argued about who was the greatest among them. What, a, what an odd thing to argue about at the Last Supper. They didn't realize fully what was going on. It was the celebration of the Passover. They ate a meal together, which was a very intimate fellowship time in that day. If you shared a meal, that meant something with those you shared a meal with. And at the end of that meal, he would have the Lord's Supper with them. And he told them to do that in remembrance of him, to remember the body and the blood of Christ. And the, and the disciples sat and argued who was the greatest as the one who would die for their sins and the sins of the whole world sat at the table and ministered to them. So Jesus tells us, but there's one thing I want you to remember. Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink. Uh, this do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Of all the things that Jesus tells them to remember, he tells them to remember why he came. 
He doesn't tell us not to remember the other things. We are to remember those things. We preach on those things, right, men? We preach about Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life. We preach about the Holy Spirit who comes to help us and comfort us. We preach about being a servant to others, not maybe necessarily washing each other's feet, but serving in like manner. We preach on the greatness of Christ and the need for sinners to have Christ. We preach on all those things. But, but one thing stood above all things that Jesus said that I want you to remember, and not only remember, I want you to do at times. I want you to break bread. I want you to drink the cup in remembrance of me. So Paul lays this all out for us. He's instructing the Corinthians how to do this in a proper fashion. I'm grateful tonight that I don't have to instruct you how to do this in a proper fashion. But I will instruct you on a few things. I will say this just as uh, by way of uh, maybe helping you as a pastor at our church. When we have the Lord's Supper, we have what we call open communion. And that simply means you don't have to be a member of my church to, to participate in the Lord's Supper at my church. But you do have to be a member of the body of Christ. You do have to know Jesus as your Savior and have repented of your sins. You have to know that you're part of the body of Christ in order to participate, but not necessarily a member of our church. And I would challenge you to do the same. I don't know if these men do that or not, but what do we do? Because it's not a it's not a Hatchman Baptist Church issue, it's a body of Christ issue. Yeah. And we are, in the way, the body of Christ. So that would be one thing I would challenge you on. But but Paul here also challenges us to make sure not only that we're saved, but we're walking worthy of the blood of the body of Christ. He says that there are some among you here at the Corinthian church that take it in an unworthy manner. That some of you have known sin that you have not repented of as a believer. He's not questioning their salvation, although, excuse me, although some of them might not have been saved, but he was talking to the believers and said, there are some of you that that are not taking this in the right manner or about to not take this in the right manner because you have unrepented of sin. And what I challenge my people, I challenge you tonight, is not to take the Lord's Supper tonight if you've got sin that you're not willing to deal with and not willing to repent of. If you have known sin, known rebellion against God tonight, then I will tell you to refrain from taking this. I... I'm not going to stand next to you and, and counsel you and find out if you've got sin in your life. That's between you and the Lord and we're going to have an opportunity, a moment to examine our own hearts. But Paul says the seriousness of this matter is if you take for granted so much the body and the blood of Christ that there are some that we know of that were sick because they did this and some have died because of this. Are you, Pastor, are you telling me that I'll get sick and die if I take the body and blood in an unworthy manner? No, but I'm telling you it could happen. But if it doesn't, you'll answer for it later. One way or another, we'll answer for it later. So what I typically do with my people, I want to do with you. I want to direct you to Psalm 139. Psalm 139. And verse 23 and 24. I want us to take a moment tonight to examine ourselves. Scripture is clear here where Paul writes that if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. If we will examine our hearts and go before the throne of God and say, Oh God, would you, would you show your light upon the dark places of my life that I may ask for cleansing and forgiveness? I don't want to take the body and the blood of Christ in an unworthy manner. And even more than that, I don't want to misrepresent you to a lost and dying world. By living as 
saying I'm a believer, but acting like a lost person. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there's any wicked <coughs> way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. I'm going to give you a few moments just to pray. Just to seek God. And maybe tonight you would sit there and say, well, Pastor Brett, I, I'm as clean as I know to be. Well, praise the Lord. But I would urge you and, and, and ask you to, to still ask God to search your heart. If you can't think of any sin, ask God, God, would you highlight any waywardness in my life that I might confess it? Not just so that I can take the Lord's Supper in a worthy manner, but that I can be right with you right now in this place. At that point, this is secondary. And this ought to be the attitude of our heart all the time. Search me, O oh God, and try me. See if there's any unclean way in you. That ought to be a, 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 a regular prayer almost for us. Because sometimes we're blinded to our own rebellion and our own sin. And we have to ask God to reveal it to us. And I believe if we search Him with our, own, with our whole heart, God will reveal it to us. If we'll be still and listen. So for the next few moments, I'm going to invite you to go to the throne of grace and ask God, God, would you search me? Oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. God, if you find anything in me, I will confess it and I will repent of it for your glory and your honor. So take the next few moments, man. Even our own team, my own mission team, I'm challenging this. Take the next few moments seeking the Lord. And then when the time is right, we'll begin the Lord's Supper.